Hi Dr. Friends, welcome to my YouTube channel PG Dr. Sindranju. Today's important topic is ENT one-liner part first. This is very important topic ENT and it is a scoring subject. If you know then you can take correct answer. And this is based on your revision purpose for nearby MS PG exam and coming up DNB exam and FMG exam. So I start with ENT one liner part first. Watch this video till last. I start with first topic is most common source of bleeding in case of nasopharyngeal angiofibroma is internal maxillary artery. Next topic is Topical treatment for recurrent respiratory papillomatosis is pseudophovir. Cosima operation is done for bilateral vocal cord palsy, many times repeated in the DNB, EMS, and FMG exam. Test for station tube malfunction is tympanometry. True about malignant otitis externa is the diabetic and immunocompromised people are more susceptible. Granulation tissue is seen on the floor of external auditory canal on otoscope and ESR is used for monitoring the disease. ESR in all case ESR is used for monitoring the disease condition, progression or deterioration. The true about Meniere's disease. Electrocochleography is the gold standard investigation and Simon Manivier decrease giddiness. Next is a child has retained disc battery in the nose. The most appropriate statement battery content might leak resulting into chemical damage of surrounding tissue. Next is condition in which topical steroid is not indicated is after endoscopic surgery for anteroconal polyp. Main etiology is the infection. A patient presents with traumatic head injury and CSF leak. Next step is wait and watch for 3 to 5 days. Here the important thing is that the traumatic head injury and CSF leak out. This indicates patient is normal. So wait and watch for 3 and three to five days is appropriate answer. The complication of adenoidectomy includes retropharyngeal abscess, cervical spine injury, velopharyngeal insufficiency and hypernasality. The most common cause of vocal cord palsy is malignant disease. An elderly man present with T3 N0 laryngeal carcinoma managed by concurrent chemo radiotherapy due to it is in the T3 stage. Which of the following so negative Rennes test in the right ear? Profound hearing loss, conductive hearing loss of the 40 decibel in the both ear and conductive hearing loss of 40 decibel in right ear and left ear normal. The screening test of high risk unit in ICU for suspected hearing loss is autoacoustic emission. The wave V in Bera represent activity in the lateral lamniscus. Resected in stepedectomy anterior cross of steps 
posterior cross of steps and stapedial ligament is resected in the stapedectomy. The part of cochlear implant implanted during the surgery is receiver stimulator. Next question is a 75 year old diabetic patient presented with severe ear pain and granulation tissue at external auditory canal with facial nerve involvement. The most likely diagnosis is skull base osteomyelitis. That means it is indicative of the malignant otitis external or external. Next question is a 14 year old boy presented with nasal bleeding. His hemoglobin was found to be 6.4 gram per dl and normocytic hypochromic anemia on the peripheral smear. The most likely diagnosis is juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. In that condition, the hemoglobin count is reduced while that of the it is normochromic sorry hypochromic and normocytic anemia. Next is a patient presented with entroconal polyp arising from the medial wall of the maxilla based in management is faced with polypectomy. An elderly male patient presented with T3 and 0 laryngeal carcinoma patient is managed with concurrent chemoradiotherapy. Here the T3 laryngeal cancer is 3P. You have to remember for such condition is the 3P is the P4 palate. P4 pharyngeal muscles and a paralysis of the vocal cord. Next is the tropical steroid. Topical steroids are recommended in the post surgery for ethmoidal polyp, chronic rhinosinusitis, and allergic fungal sinusitis. The true about tonsillectomy in the children or sleep apnea is an indicate on adenoids should also be removed if significantly involved and cricothyroid region is high and anterior in the children than adult. Next is the what is the play during surgery for the cochlear implant is receiver stimulation due to it is many times repeated A patient after eating peanut presented with laryngeal edema, stridor, hoarseness of voice and swelling of tongue. Most likely diagnosis is the angioneurotic edema. Next question is a 36 year old obese man who is non-smoker, snores and has hypertension. In sleep test, 5 apnea per hypernia per hour was noted. He is put on anti-hypertensive and advice to quit smoking. Next to be done is weight reduction and diet plan. A 35 year old pregnant lady complain of hearing loss which aggravate during pregnancy was sent for temperometry. Graph seen is AS O2 sclerosis for such condition. True about Bell's palsy. Is steroid are used unilateral facial weakness and rule of herpes simplex a bone anchored hearing aid baha can be used in a seven year old child with bilateral microsia and canal atresia with conductive hearing loss a 40 year old man presented with left ear discharge and mild ear pain for the past seven years but no history of deafness on examination tympanic membrane is intact and discharge is seen coming from the posterior superior wall the left ear canal and the tympanic membrane are normal most likely diagnosis is chronic otitis media due to here tympanic membrane is intact next to that is a girl underwent mastoidectomy for chronic ear discharge and retrovital pain but there was no relief postoperatively and continuous ear discharge was seen. Most probable diagnosis is the apical petrocytis. 
the boundaries of facial races it is coda tympani facial nerve and short process of incus the trick to remember is csf c4 coda tympani s4 short process of incus and f4 facial nerve the question arising that father of neurology is house next question is a 70 year old gentleman with diabetic presented with persistent ear discharge with fever and headache and pain out of proportion on examination granulation tissue is observed in the external auditory canal along with facial nerve palsy he is not responding to antibiotic most probable diagnosis is malignant otitis externa next is a 50 year 58 year old gentleman presented with persistent fullness of left ear and hearing loss for 3 months on examination there is fluid behind the tympanic membrane impedance audiometry so type b audiogram next done is endoscopic examination for any nasopharyngeal pathology next is an elderly lady presented with nasal block nasal discharge diplopia facial swelling on examination there is blackish discharge from the nasal cavity with necrosis of nasal mucosa septum and heart plate there is elevated blood glucose and urinary ketones are positive the best drug for this patient is amphotericin b third window effect is seen in superior semicircular canal dehiscence most important question next is the laryngeal pseudo sulcus is seen in the laryngo pharyngeal reflux a necessary criteria for successful cochlear implant is presence of auditory nerve the initial mechanism of action of intratympanic gentamicin microvic catheter is treatment of meniere's disease due to it inactivate sodium potassium atpas channel is on hair cell high frequency high frequency audiometry is used in ototoxicity the initial screening test for newborn hearing disorder is the autoacoustic emission laser uvulopharyngeal uvulo pharyngo palatoplasty is the surgery for snoring the initial screening test for newborn hear hearing disorder is autoacoustic emission this is the initial screening test of newborn the vestibular evoked myogenic potential vemp detects lesion of inferior vestibular nerve next is the second primary tumor of head and neck is most commonly seen in malignancy of oral cavity next is in electrocochleography evoked potential is generated in cochlea and auditory nerve next is on right handed person direct laryngoscope is held in the left hand very important question a 6 year old child presented with history of recurrent upper respiratory tract infection mouth breathing nasal obstruction hearing impairment with high arched plate management will be adenoidectomy with grommet insertion according to european laryngeal society sub ligamental cordectomy is classified as type 2 topical mitomycin is used for the treatment of laryngeal stenosis infection of inner ear spread through cochlear aqueduct next is microvic and microcatheter sustained release are used in delivering drug to round membrane this is last of this video thanks for 
फ्रेंड्स फॉर वाचिंग माय वीडियो हैव ए नाइस डे बंदे मातरम